Hello, Abnormal. Uh, <clears throat> sorry we had to cancel the boots on the ground tonight. Uh, I think we might have got some bad food. It made us kind of feel under the weather, so we ended up staying in. We had storms earlier. It was wet and rainy, so uh, I don't know. We just decided to take it easy. But this encounter, guys, it's uh, different. Never had one like this, I don't think. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't think we've ever had one sent in like this at all. I'm not going to give my opinion at the end of this because I really do truly want to hear what you all think about this. Uh, I will say that it's very interesting. It caught my attention. And it made me think about some things. So let me know what you think, guys. And hopefully we'll hear more from this guy if you all want to hear more from him. If you don't, then uh, of course I won't put him on. But... Here's what he says, and to clear up some things, this gentleman says that he is a werewolf, and a lot of these things that he's seen that happened, happened while he was transformed in the woods. He was not in his human form, that's why he was able to see the things that he talks about, so to kind of clear that up, but let's get into it. <clears throat> I'm about to share something that might sound crazy. But it's my truth. I'm something that many people don't believe in or even understand. My heart races just thinking about it. What if people laugh or think I'm weird? But I need to get this off of my chest. I've kept it hidden for a long, long time. For so long. Afraid of judgment or rejection. But the weight of sorcery is crushing me. I need to be honest. Even if it's scary. There are no dogmen, Mike. In the sense that people think they are. I am going to share something that will change your mind. And I'm telling you from someone that knows. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I'm going to spill some wild conspiracy theory. Or try to convince you of something absurd. But the truth is. I'm not here to convince you of anything, Mike. I just need to share my story and hope that by doing so, you'll understand where I'm coming from, and it may even help you on your hunts, or save your life. I'm not even sure where to begin. It's hard to put into words, but I'll try. You see, I'm different. I've always felt like there's something inside me, something that doesn't quite fit with the rest of the world. I know this sounds vague, but bear with me. I'm trying to gather the courage to share something that could change everything, something that could make you see me in a whole new light. And speaking of seeing people, you should judge them by their friends. If they're friends with witches and warlocks, then look what you've got. Trust me, Mike, it all goes together in what you and Brooks called the spider web. Yes, I listened to your show. And in the middle of that spider web is a red-haired Nephilim. Trust me, they are the worst. I know this is a lot to take in, but I'm one of them. A dogman, or as I like to call it, a transitional, where the ones who are still learning to control our powers or tap into the ancient magic that runs through our veins. When I say red Nephilims, Look up the Kandahar Giant. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's not easy, trust me. It's like having a wild animal inside you fighting to get out. But we're not monsters, despite what humans might think. We're just different. And what about to share with you, Mike, and what I'm going to share with you, is something that no human has ever heard before. It's a secret that's been kept hidden for centuries, and secrets... That could change the course of our history and even jeopardize my very life with my tribe. We have always been here. It is not our choice to be here. We are all part of this generational curse. It started way back before anyone truly ever knew. We were what fairy tales were made of. You see, Mike, our kind has been around for centuries, living in secret, hiding in plain sight. We're the ones who inspired the old stories, the legends of shapeshifters and monsters and scary old bridges with the names of trolls. 
but the truth is, we're not monsters by choice. We're victims of a curse of a curse that's been passed down through generations. I don't know how it started or why, but I know that I am a part of it. I've lived with this curse my whole life, feeling the changes in my body, the urges and the instincts that I cannot control. It's like I'm two people in one, fighting for dominance. Sometimes I feel like I'm living a dream. A dream that I can't wake up from. But I'm not alone. There are others like me. Others who struggle to control their powers to live normal lives despite the curse. Yes, we do run in packs, and we have packs that we are friends with that we share all of our deepest secrets. It's a sacred pack. And that's what I want to share with you, Mike. I want to tell you my story. The story of a transitional, a dogman, a werewolf. I want to show you that we're not monsters, but people just like you. You're right on the moon phases. You nailed that. Good job. You scared a lot of us. The lycanthropes were not happy that you brought that out. But it seems you're not going to let that die. So you're right. We do prefer to hunt on the lower light ends, the gibbous and the waxing and the waning, but we do hunt when we're hungry. Most of us still have our c cognitive abilities, but some lose it altogether, and they are what we call the man-eaters. The man-eaters are a danger to both humans and our kind. They're the ones who give us a bad name, who spark the fear and hatred that leads into the hunts and killings. But we're not like them, not like that. Most of us try to live in harmony to balance our nature with our humanity. And if by some chance we are caught off guard by the booger hunters with their flashlights and so forth, we will try to scare you and bluff you to get you to leave. But you may piss us off if you get our photo. I've seen it happen through the loss of control. It's like a switch flips and suddenly the beast takes over. I've struggled with it myself, felt the hunger and the fury rising up. But I've learned to manage it and to keep the wolf at bay. Not everyone is so lucky. Some are consumed by the curse, lost of the darkness, and that's when the man-eaters are born. They are the ones who hunt the shadows. They are the ones that prey on the innocent, but they are not the normal ones. We're not all monsters, Mike. We're just complicated. But if you make us angry, we can lose all control. So it's better that we're not pushed. Observe from a distance and know when it's time to go home and we are not part of the Sasquatch they are something different we actually fear them they can destroy us with ease and their knowledge is way deeper than ours they are the masters of the woods for sure some of them are mean and others actually like humans we've had encounters with both of course some of my kind have even formed alliances with the friendly ones they're wise and they're ancient and with the knowledge of the forest that's unparalleled. They have taught us things shown, and they have showed us secrets that we would have never discovered on our own. But they're very shy, and they do not talk to us much, nor do they share much. But the mean ones, they're a different story. They're fierce and territorial, and they won't hesitate to attack if they feel threatened. We have lost some of our own to their wrath, and it's a risk when we take out on an adventure into their territory. Despite the dangers, we respect them. We know our place in the hierarchy, and we don't challenge their dominance. We coexist for the most part, and we have learned to live with their presence. It's a delicate balance, but it's one that works. We have observed them building fires, but they're always careful to contain them. They're very afraid of fire. To keep them small and controlled, and as if they respect the power of the fire, but also fear its potential to destroy. They use it for warmth, for cooking, and for signaling, but they never let it get out of control or very large at all. Even a campsite-sized fire they will stay away from. They fear it so much because their fur is very flammable. Their tools are impressive too. They use stone knives, wooden spears, and bone axes. It's like they're stuck in a time warp refusing to adapt to the modern world. But at the same time, their ways are effective and they seem to be able to survive and thrive in the forest without needing modern technology. We have tried to communicate with them to understand their beliefs and their way of life, but they are elusive and they rarely interact with us. It's as if they're watching us, waiting for us to make a move. We have learned to respect their boundaries to give them space and allow them to live their lives, and for sure never go to their burial grounds. 
The evil ones prefer to take the taste of children, and they will eat their own. The nice ones have the taste for the children, but they control it. I've seen witnesses. I have even witnessed them in prayer along the lake during the sunset. Yes, the Sasquatch pray. At sunset, they bow and they pray. I remember watching them from a distance, seeing the way that they close their eyes and they tilt their faces towards the sky. It was as if they were communing with something, something greater than themselves, something ancient and wise. The lake was calm, reflecting the colors off the sunset like a mirror, and the forest was quiet, as if holding its breath for respect. I felt a sense of peace in that moment, a sense of wonder that I'd never experienced before. It was as if I had stumbled upon a secret, a hidden world that existed parallel to ours. And there was a bunch of them. There was a whole clan of them that were praying together. Mind you, I was transformed when I seen this. I was hunting. It was like a veil had been lifted from my eyes and I saw the world in a new light. There was something that even they worshipped. Now the transformation, as far as a dogman and a werewolf, was gradual, but it was profound. And I will explain to you, when you see a dogman, a lot of people talk about their legs, their legs, their legs. If they were bent backwards or if they looked like a dog's legs standing up or if they were human. The answer is, if they look like dog legs, when you see them, that means that they are new to the transformation and they have not quite developed the skills or the power or the strength to be able to complete the transformation which would give them human legs. Eventually, they will be able to accomplish this while they practice transforming and they will become a full-blown werewolf. When we hear the word dogman, we laugh. We think it's funny and comical because we know truly what they are. They are us. They are just not able to fully transform into the hierarchy of the werewolf until they understand their powers. The dogmen, as you call them, are werewolves in training. They are the new ones. I hope I've given you all a lot to ponder, and I may write back if you all would like to hear more about the world that you all do not believe exists. But thank you for your time, Mike. I enjoy to watch your hunts, even though it's like you're hunting my family. Sometimes I watch to see if I might even recognize a face. He put life out loud. Thank you so much. Like I said, guys, I'm not going to give an opinion on this one. I do look forward to what you're going to say in chat. I think this will be a very interesting chat. We'll probably have a lot of conversation. And uh, as always, guys, smash that like button. Keep your head on a swivel. Don't be something's dinner. And we'll see you on the next one.